This is 12.3, Introduction to Polynomials. Before we can define a polynomial, we need to know what a monomial is in mathematics. A monomial is an algebraic expression consisting of one term that is either a number, which we call a constant, a letter, which is also called a variable, or the product, which means we multiply the numbers and the letters. So some examples of monomials include, and they're written here, 5, 5a, 5a squared, 5ab, so that's three different things, 5a and b, they're all being multiplied, a negative 5b, 5abc, or even a divided by 5. So, and, and this can be, this is considered a product because this could also be considered one-fifth times a. Um, so, these are monomials because you don't see any pluses or minuses in between the terms. So, if it's just a term, you see just numbers or letters with no pluses or minuses in between them, they're just a product, then that's considered a monomial. Okay, so um, a polynomial is the sum of many monomials, and these are some examples of polynomials. So 5a plus 3b, that would be considered to have two terms. This is a term, and this is a term, and they're being added together. 5a plus 3b minus c, that would be three separate terms. And then 5a plus 3b minus c, plus 4 would be would have four terms. When you see pluses or minuses, those are separating the terms. So as we said, a monomial that is still is considered to be a polynomial with one term. So all of these are monomials 5x, 5x or 5xyz are all monomials because there's only one term. You don't see any pluses or minuses. Okay, and then a binomial is a polynomial with exactly two terms. Okay, so this is a binomial because we see two terms. The two terms are separated by a plus sign. A minus B is also a binomial. It's two terms separated by a minus sign. 3xy plus 7 is a binomial because 3xy, that's one term. They're, they're all connected. There's no pluses or minuses in between the numbers and letters. So that's one term, and this is one term. So there's two terms connected by a plus or minus. So one way to remember that, a bicycle has two wheels. A binomial has two terms. All right, how many wheels does a tricycle have? It has three wheels, just like a trinomial is a polynomial with three terms. So this would be a polynomial A plus B minus C. That's three separate terms connected by pluses or minuses. 3X minus 4Y plus 7. Again, that's three terms. And X squared plus X plus 8, again, is three terms. So those are all trinomials. A monomial that just consists of a real number is called a constant. So if we have only numbers, no letters, those are called constants. What is it that we call numbers, I mean letters? Another word for letters is a variable. So if you think about what those words mean, what does constant mean? If something is constant, it stays the same. It doesn't change. Well, we call numbers constant because 17 is always going to be 17. Negative 2 is always going to be negative 2. But we call letters like X or Y or A or B, we call those variables because X could represent the number 5 or it could represent the number 1 or it could represent any number. So what those letters represent vary or they change. 
when something varies, it changes. So that's why they're called variables. The coefficient is the number connected to the variable by multiplication. So in these examples, 5a, the coefficient of 5a is 5 because that is the number connected to the variable by multiplication. In negative 3b, negative 3 is the coefficient. Here in x, what do you think the coefficient is? Anytime we don't see a coefficient, it's understood to be a 1. Um, there is 1x here. So the coefficient is understood to be a 1. All right, in y over 2, this one's a little tricky. Now, just like I said, the number in front of the variable, if we see a variable, is understood to be a 1. So you can imagine that there is a 1 there. Therefore, this could also be written as 1 half y. So the coefficient would be 1 half. Every polynomial is also said to have a degree. The degree is the highest value of the exponent on the variable. For example, in this trinomial here, this is a trinomial because it has three terms, the highest exponent is a 3. So that's the degree of this trinomial. So whatever the biggest exponent is, that's the degree. Polynomials are usually written in descending order, which means from highest to lowest according to the exponents. So whatever variable has the biggest exponent, that's going to go first, and then we go down to the lowest. So let's look at this example. If we're going to write these polynomials in descending order, if I look at this first polynomial, what is the biggest exponent? All right, that's the biggest exponent. So that means that term, the whole term, needs to go first. Now, what is the term? Always make sure that you carry the sign that's in front of the term with the number. Okay, so that's going to be a negative 2x to the third. All right, then what's the next biggest uh, exponent on the variable? The next, next biggest exponent would be this 2. So that's going to go next, plus 3x squared. All right, so we're done with this one. We're done with this one. So if we look at what's left, this doesn't have a variable, but this one does. And if it's, if it's not written there, it's understood to be a 1. Okay, so that would be the next biggest exponent on the variable. All right, so then the last thing would be the constant. So the constant always goes last. All right, so that would be standard form of a polynomial. Okay, so for B, which term should go first? This would go first. So that's y to the fourth. Okay, what goes next? Plus 6y. And the last thing would be the constant, which is not just 7, negative 7. <laughs> All right, if we're going to simplify a polynomial, it means to collect like terms and write it in descending order. Okay, so like terms are any terms that have the same variable with the same exponent. So here we have these two are like terms, and um, and these two are like terms. Okay, so we want it to we want our answer to be in descending order. So we'll go ahead and start with the uh, highest exponents. Well, those are constants, so we know that the constants need to go last. So if I combine, this is an understood 1x. 1x minus 3x would be a negative 2x. Okay, so I'm done with the x's. So next, I, com I combine my two constants. I have 
a positive 1 and a negative 6, which would give me negative 5. Okay, so now I don't have to move it around because the way that I added it, I added the biggest um, variables, the biggest exponents first. So that's first and the constant's last, and now it's in standard form. Okay, so let's look at D. We want to combine like terms. So we have two different exponents. We have exponents of 5 and we have exponents of 2. So we'll start with the 5s. The 6a to the 5th plus a to the 5th would be 7a to the 5th. All right, and then I have a positive 2a squared minus 3a squared, which would give me a negative 1, which I don't write the 1, a squared. All right, we have one more. Um, if we start with the biggest exponent, these two terms have 4s. But if I combine them, a negative 3y to the 4th and a positive 3y to the 4th, those would just cancel each other out. Okay, so then we go to the y's next. I have a negative y and a positive 7y. That would give me a positive 6y. Okay, my constants are left. I have a positive 2 and a negative 4, which would give me negative 2. All right, to evaluate a polynomial means to find the value of the polynomial given a specific value for the variable. This says to, uh, I have this polynomial here and they want me to find the value if x is two. So that just means I take two and I'm going to plug it in for x's, the x's in the polynomial. All right, so that would be five, and I'm gonna plug in two where the x is, and that x is squared minus two times, I'm plugging in two again, plus one. All right, so now I need to follow order of operations. Order of operations says parentheses first, but that is only when things are grouped together. These parentheses mean multiplication. So the next thing in order of operations would be exponents. So I want to do this exponent first, and 2 squared is 4. So next comes multiplication. If I multiply 5 times 4, that's 20. Negative 2 times positive 2 is negative 4 plus 1. And now I can just add and subtract from left to right. 20 minus 4 is 16 and 16 plus 1 is 17. Okay, so now let's evaluate the same polynomial when x is negative 1. All right, so I'm going to plug in negative 1 for x in both places. Okay, so again, Follow order of operations. We're going to do the exponent first. Negative 1 squared would become positive 1. All right, so 5 times 1 would just give me 5. Negative 2 times negative 1 would become positive 2 plus 1. All right, 5 plus 2 is 7, and 7 plus 1 is 8. And that's how we evaluate a polynomial. All right, so now we have a polynomial and we are to determine um, what the terms are or the coefficients are, depending on how the chart is filled out. Okay, so we are referring to this polynomial right here. And in this polynomial, it says the term is x squared. What is the coefficient of that term? Okay, so if we look at this term, the x squared term, what is the coefficient? So remember, coefficient is the number in front of the um, variable. 
So we don't see a number, so it's understood to be one. Okay, for the next um, thing, they're giving us the coefficient. So it says the coefficient of the term is negative eight. What is the whole term? So if I look up here, I see negative eight here. The whole term would be negative eight x to the fourth. All right, and then I have the whole term is negative three x. What is the coefficient of that term? It would be negative three. And then the last one, the coefficient is seven. What is the whole term? It would be seven x to the fifth. Okay, we wanna identify the degrees in these polynomials. What is the degree of number one? So remember the degree is whatever the biggest exponent is. So the degree here would be four. All right, what about for number two? For number two, it's not the first one. It's this one, it's whatever the biggest one is. So the degree would be five. All right, now we need to identify um, the degree and tell if it's a monomial, binomial, or trinomial. Okay, so for number one, what is the degree? The degree is two. Is it a monomial, binomial, or trinomial? Well, we have three terms, so this would be a trinomial. Okay, for number two, what is the degree? Well, I don't see any exponents, but I know that if it's a variable, it has an understood exponent of one. So my degree is gonna be one. Is this a monomial, binomial, or trinomial? Since it's got two terms, this would be a binomial. Okay, and then for number three, what is the degree? The degree would be five because the biggest exponent is a five. And then is it a monomial, binomial, or trinomial? Well, a monomial has one term, binomial has two terms, and a trinomial has three terms. This has four terms, so this is just a polynomial. Any polynomial, polynomials with more than three terms doesn't have a special name. So we just say that this is um, Oh, I'm spelling it wrong. This is just a polynomial or a polynomial with four terms. And that's the end of this lesson.